Information on common cancers like lung, breast and colorectal is widely available. But what if you have a rarer cancer, such as a neuroendocrine tumor or NET? I'm Richard Olden for The NET Report. This series is designed to help you understand NETs, how to identify the symptoms, and most important, what to ask your doctor so you're diagnosed and treated early. In our first report, we ask, what are neuroendocrine tumors, often referred to as carcinoid tumors? We'll speak to physicians who have become expert at understanding what nets are and to patients who have navigated these rough waters. In coming segments, we'll look at how nets can sometimes be misdiagnosed, the tests and information needed to handle nets, how patients adapt to living with nets, and how doctors in several specialties are involved in treating this serious condition. Dr. Larry Coles treats many patients with these types of tumors. We asked him to describe what they are. Well, neuroendocrine tumors are a group of tumors that arise from cells in the body that have both neurologic and endocrine function, hence the name neuroendocrine. And these are cells that are ubiquitously distributed. We have them in our pituitary hypothalamus area, in our thyroid, in our lungs and uh, airways, in the stomach, the pancreas, the small and large intestine, and in the rectal uh, area. So they're truly uh, distributed throughout the body. There are even some in the skin. So there are neuroendocrine cancers that can arise from any of these organs. They grow and often aren't recognized until they become a sufficient size that they're invading local tissues and cause pain or they may obstruct the flow of bile from the liver into the intestinal tract or they may get to the point where they just obstruct the passage of normal uh, food and um, liquids through the intestinal tract and cause a bowel obstruction. We asked Dr. Simran Singh what a patient should be aware of what symptoms indicated the possible presence of a NET? There's a wide variety of symptoms that someone with a neuroendocrine tumor can experience. Um, they can range from very generalized symptoms like abdominal pain, nausea, even vomiting, uh, to feeling unwell, to much more specific symptoms like flushing, um, multiple times a day often, uh, diarrhea, uh, wheezing, or what we call bronchospasm. If I was a patient and I presented with flushing, diarrhea, uh, wheezing or generalized abdominal pain, uh, I would definitely ask my physician if they had thought about neuroendocrine cancer as part of uh, a possible diagnosis. Very often, these characteristic symptoms lead a doctor to suspect and test for a NET, but some patients do not experience these symptoms at all. Some patients have non-functioning tumors, and these patients do not come for specific symptoms. They come either by chance, because something is found on an imaging procedure, for instance, or because they have a tumor burden responsible for pain, for asthenia, for any vague or non-specific condition that finally turns to be an endocrine tumor. NETs are relatively rare compared with other tumor types, but patients diagnosed with NET are not alone. There are many patients living with NETs around the world and many more with undiagnosed nets. The incidence of nets worldwide is rising sharply. Reasons for this increase are not known. Unfortunately, neuroendocrine tumors aren't well understood, I think, or uh, commonly known by the medical community, and that causes a lot of problems in terms of diagnosis. Often, uh, by the time a patient reaches me, they've seen multiple doctors and have spent sometimes up to years um, trying to explore uh, different opinions uh, to try to come to a conclusion about why they're having the symptoms that they are. Dr. Frederico Costa also talked to us about diagnosis difficulties. Sometimes the patient doesn't realize that he has a problem. Second, the physician, uh, if he's not really thinking on the diagnosis, sometimes it can miss it because as you know, the symptoms can overlap with a bunch of diseases. So biopsy is very important, not only to get a good sample, 
but sometimes to have a good pathologist in your hand. Sometimes the pathology that made the initial diagnosis is not an expert on this field, so it's commonly necessary to have a second opinion on the pathology. It may take a little time, but it's very important to have it. A net can occur in individuals of any age. Nets are seen equally in men and women. And of course, hearing that you have a net can be a life-changing experience. It was very tough on me and my husband and my family um, hearing the word cancer. When I went to the gastroenterologist, it was right before Easter. So he did some tests and then after Easter is when he came in and he told me I had carcinoid cancer and I probably had about a year and he was very sorry and he was a little teary and I was kind of teary and my husband was really teary. Initially I found it an extremely devastating bit of news that I got from the doctor. Nobody could tell me in terms of prognosis. What I had read at one point back in 1990 is that the maximum life expectancy with carcinoid was possibly five to 10 years. And I had a child who was about eight at the time. And I remember saying, I just need to be able to make it till he's an adult, till he's a person, till he can make his own decisions, because I knew that he needed me a lot. But there is a lot of hope. There are many kinds of treatments and expertise is growing every year. Each patient will require a different type of treatment. Every situation is unique. It's important to work that out very clearly and make sure what is the type of disease, what's the rate of progression, and how we're going to treat that patient. Not only do these tumors behave in a more slow-growing, indolent fashion, but there are also numerous treatment options available we're always going to be thinking about surgery as the number one approach to treatment because if we can resect the disease, the patient's going to have a much better quality of life and a more prolonged uh, survival. And we can cure some of these patients when they're detected early. Dr. Rusniewski gave us some insight into the many other treatment options available. We have quite a number of possibilities. We have, of course, classical chemotherapy, by intravenous route. We have treatments devoted to the liver, and these are embolization, chemoembolization, radiofrequency ablation, all procedures that are performed by the radiologist and directly in the liver. Then, and this is uh, rather new, we have targeted therapies which are very, very interesting and give promising results. We have newer compounds in the field of the, some intracellular, the inhibition, I would say, of intracellular pathways, such, a, such as, for instance, mTOR inhibition. We have anti-androgenic anti drugs, such as bevacizumab. In addition to your doctor's help and advice, there are numerous sources of online information and support groups available. I think there's a lot of good organizations, patient support groups. Um, there's a lot of good information on the, uh, the internet. And generally, most cancer centers as well will have support groups and uh, support mechanisms for patients. Advocacy groups and websites like Nanets, Enets, Carcinoid Groups and the Net Alliance are all good places to find what you need to understand your disease and its treatment. When you go on the net, you'll find out how many people are carcinoid, and they have groups, which I belong to. It could help you. I would definitely tell someone who is newly diagnosed to join a support group where they can touch base with um, a lot of patients that have been through something similar. Being an informed patient makes you the best advocate for your health and treatment. Our thanks to all our participants for the background on what NETs are and where to seek help. For more information, go to the NET community website. It brings together people from around the world to enhance awareness, understanding and management of this disease. Be sure to watch the other segments of this important series so you can be your own advocate. We'll be discussing how NETs can sometimes be misdiagnosed, the information needed to handle NETs 
how patients adapt to living with nets, and the multidisciplinary approach to treating this serious condition. This is Richard Olden for The Net Report.